was UQ. And this time, yeah, this time we are going to capture the laptop. It's not going to crash. So big hello to anyone that is watching us out there. Um, just why? <laughs> why? What would anyone have to do with us right now? Exactly, Jeb. Exactly. But there'll be there'll be I, someone out there that's watching this, and they'll be thinking, "What the hell?" Um, on the outskirts of the English-speaking world is currently listening in to the four of us. Yeah. So, so just as a quick recap, um, last week or well, the last session we played, you guys had set up camp at the bottom at the base of this ancient um, temple. Um, this was immediately after coming out of. Um, the underground passages underneath the Mistcliff Mountains. Um, so you travelled for the best part of a day, set up camp at this temple, and for the most part, you know, it's a fairly pleasant and, and peaceful environment, with the exception of the um, stampeding um, Triceratops that almost took out um, Damakos um, after he uh, d d disturbed it from its slumber. Um, I believe, Serana, you have spent most of your time trying to crack and break, you know, figure out, you know, the secrets that are behind this temple. And you've worked, you've managed to work out and decode, as it were, how to uh, traverse through those magical barriers with the help of those small chewingars. Um, yeah. you, you've got the information for those. I sent them to you in our last session. Uh, um, yeah, I've got them on Roll20. We've got Jem, um, with hey. Criv. Um, you know, you you've played a, a vital role in this as well. You've not really um, done anything special to get, to get up this way. You followed Serana, but you have attempted to use force to get through the magical barriers, and you've learned fairly quickly that that was not going to happen. But you have made your way to the top. Um, Amos, you've spent most of your time. Um, obsessing um, almost compulsively over the labyrinth designs on the temple architecture for, for, for the architecture that does remain in any sound um, condition um, you feel like you're on the verge of you know, like discovering some important details um, but you're not quite there yet you know if only you could get to the to the top, you're sure there's bound to be better preserved um, pieces, perhaps inside the um, the stone temple, uh, the stone structure on top of the temple. Um, the rest of the party um, have, you know, they, they've set up camp. I believe, you know, at one point you were seeking the feathers of a red bird. Um, yeah. To which James, who was spent a glorious day and night hunting. Um, this red parrot finally got his um, landed his quarry only to be fall victim to a strange blue mist which has wiped his memory completely and now he seems dazed and confused as to you know where he is who he's with but all he knows is that he, he is safe with this party although he is confused as one of the party members keeps changing his form and at one point had shifted and, and changed to look exactly like James Stempson. Other than that, the two dwarves are quite rowdily drinking um, and just enjoying the, the, the peace. It's a fairly tranquil um, evening. So we will go, we'll start with those that are at the top of the stairs. So Serana and Kriv. Um, what, what are you guys, yeah, what, what's your decision? At the moment, you've got the stone temple in front of you you know there are six pillars and then a strange altar like bowl dish in the center of this platform uh i thought we were gonna do like a short rest or something here uh, yeah so i thought we rested already uh, i think we were we, we gonna get there? yeah you you guys I feel like we were gonna get yeah, you guys would have already rested. So if it's if it's hit points, if it's spells, if it's anything of that sort that you're worried about, you're you're perfectly fine. Um, you know, you've not exerted any real effort to get through these stairs. It's been mostly time, and and that's it. Um, can I have a look at pillars? 
With the six pillars? Yeah. Yep. Can you do an investigation check for me, please? I can. Uh, Eight. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you, they're made of stone. Um, they stand <laughs> no taller than you know half your size, three to four feet. Um, all of them have small dishes on the on the top, like stone bowls. Um, carved, you know, as as one with the with the pillar, um, you know, there appears to be f long, long faded stains, but you can't quite make out what what the st what the stains has had come from. Um, if you want, you can make a religious check for me. Religion, knowledge, religion. Twenty one. It doesn't. Yeah, you, you've seen setups like this before. This is an altar, um, more than likely an altar of sacrifice. You quickly, you know, your sharp insight quickly brings you to the conclusion that the stains probably were stains of blood. Ooh. Maybe a second, guys. I'm just trying to find my reading on. this particular place. Aha, there we go. <coughs> yeah, so, yeah, this is an altar, and it's, a sh you know, clearly a shrine. So ahead of you, this, the stone building, you know, you would expect there to be some religious artefacts um, there, definitely, definitely. Um, what you noticed, uh, this is gem and... Eliza, um, you know, the stone building, the outside walls are decorated again in multiple labyrinth symbols. And this time there's the, the visage of like a monkey um, here and there. There's an open doorway and inside you can just about make out it's, you know, a dark, empty, you know, dusty room. Um, What's your passive wisdom, Sarana? Uh, 16. Okay, yeah, you, you make out the smell of incense. So is this like a, would I be able to understand whether this is like a religious thing because of the altar or? Yep, or you know, like this, kind of, okay. the, the incense is, is not like incense you've, you've smelt. In religious settings before but it is the it does have that telltale musky smell um jem mm. what's your passive wisdom uh 15. yeah you pick up on the smell of incense as well so both of you are aware and whilst these two are just sniffing out this top um part harry a moose um where, where are you positioned at the moment i think you're in the camp aren't you yeah that's I was right preparing some uh some food while we were having a short rest um, and I was going to serve that to the rest of the group, make sure they are not fatigued or, um, good, good. So that's, that's sure food and water. Yeah. Yeah. Food and drink. Cool. Good. Good choice. Well done. Mm. Yeah. So as you're handing food around, you can see Damakos is kind of thrashing again as if he's having one of those fits or spasms that you've seen him often do at the bottom of the stairs of the temple well that sucks you just gonna leave him harry sorry i was about to blow my nose um <laughs> i assume I've not really seen him too much because obviously in combat he wouldn't have been around. So I'm not going to tend to him. If anyone else of the of the party, such as Nefesharab or Alaris, I'm sure Alaris would because obviously then he'd owe him again. Okay. Well, let's have Musharib 
you know, and Ord, they, they, you know, drag him across to the camp. They lie him down and um, they're tending to his wounds. Clearly he's been poisoned. It looks like he swallowed something he shouldn't have swallowed. Um, yeah, so are, are, are you done? Are you going to stay put? Are you quite happy to rest? Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to chill with the group. Uh, and then maybe my next time, take a look at these runes again, and these things. This, I don't think repeatedly just staring at them particularly talent is going to be too great on understanding it and mental health of the moves. Okay, well, I'm going to leave you there studying them. It probably will be morning time by the time we come back to you, um, because I would imagine these two are going to enter that stone shrine um, now. Um, so back up to the top of the temple. Um, like, as I said to you before, it is late evening. Uh, it's a clear sky. Stars are out. Um, you're atop this temple. You know, you look around you. The, you could mistake the jungles of Cholt to be a fairly calm and pleasant place to be. Um, you could be mistaken to think that, although you know firsthand that the jungles are full of peril and danger, um, especially with that, that, you know, inviting smell of incense that's in the air. Um, yeah. Uh, this, like, monkey head thing, would I recognise this as, like, any kind of god? Hmm. Just remind me, Serana, when you were yeah. back in Port um, Nine Zero, you did you frequent you frequented a lot of the religious establishments? Um, yeah, you con conversed. You know, you would you would have seen this like this monkey face plastered everywhere. It is one of the you know, one of the, the ancient gods of the peninsula, um, not a god that's worshipped widely by Cholton's um, nowadays. Um, you know, other religions have since taken uh, taken place, but this is the god Ubtal. Um, it's a, ah, yeah. you know, a, 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 a trickster, a trickster god of the peninsula, uh, the Cholton Peninsula. Okay. I'd, I'd like to uh, go inside uh, cautiously. Uh, Kriv, are you following? Kriv? Yeah? Are you following? Uh, I will follow Serana, but I was pro Kriv was promised a queen up there. The whole reason he's come so far in his journey was because he was promised a queen up top. So he is very loudly calling for the queen to appear. <laughs> Serana, like you're entering cautiously and quietly, whilst Kriv is just storming behind you, calling out for his queen. Queen! Quiet, quiet. This place is probably trapped and full of monsters, and like, you've already got yourself hurt enough. You, I don't want to fix you up more. <laughs> oh, of, of course, Serana. Queen! Queen! He starts whisper shouting. Do, just, you know what? That's better than before. Yeah. Do you both have your orchid and feather still? I'm assuming yeah. you still have them on your person? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so as you enter into uh, the, the, the shrine, let's, let's call it the shrine, um, something odd happens. Like you, as soon as you pass that, the, the, the veil, the, the, the doorway, you are not entering the room in, upon which you had seen from the outside. This isn't a dusty, dark, barren room. Instead, it's illuminated with hanging lamps and there is incense ferociously burning and filling the room with exotic scents um, and, and curling smoke like tendrils you know, drifting about this this colourful room, this vibrantly colourful room. Um, there are cushions and reed mats that are covering the floor. 
There are pots of blooming flowers. Um, most of the flowers, uh, by the way, are of the same variety that you are holding currently, those orange orchids. Um, you notice, you know, the, the, the walls are plastered um, in a thick red ochre-like dye um, with various, like, colourful paintings um, of, of the wildlife and, and birds, especially red parrots, etc., uh, etc. Et um, and something else that really does capture your attention is the sound of the, the jungle, you know, the sound of life as you are listening to the bird song of the Chalton jungle. Um, it's, you know, it's something that takes you by surprise. You know, you're entering this room, you know, and, and you're hearing this. It's just coming to life. It's hitting you. The smells, the colours, the vibrancy. You know, you've, it's like you've walked into a, a different dimension. The weirdest... Yeah, go on. Well, while Serrano is not trusting his base, Crib, on the other hand, is nodding his head. This is a very good place for a queen to be staying, and he sees the cushions on the floor. Are they sort of arranged as sort of a sitting area, or are they just scattered about? Then, um, you know, plenty of seating areas, Jim. Mm. Uh, which one has, like, the biggest cushion? No! <laughs> Well, actually, the largest area of seating, at first, Jim, you do not notice. But as you kind of look over to see, you know, where where the, the largest cushions are, you can have easily mistaken the scales of this, this snake-like creature as just part of the depot. Now, this immense snake has iridescent scales, is just resting on heaps of those cushions, you know, directly opposite the doorway on the other end of the chamber. Um, as you guys have entered the room, it rises slowly, around about to the height of, of five feet. And imagine like... A... That's higher than me. Say it again? That's higher than me. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is, you know... If you want, is Serana scared of snakes? Or I'm assuming not, considering you just swallowed one. Yeah, no, that's snakes. Yeah, so imagine like a cobra, um, but of, you know, the size of five feet. And instead of having like a cobra, like, head, it has the head almost of a human, except it's not human flesh, but scales. But the eyes, the nose, the mouth are most certainly of human origin. Um, Would I recognise this? Yeah. I, I did research on that snake. I'll be my bad. You did research the one time. Um, yeah. Whether you Is this one of them? Yeah. Roll, roll an insight check for me. Because... Yeah. It, it's, it is, it is. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah. 20, no natural. Okay, so, yeah, you would recognise this creature to be one time. Um, oh, of yeah. one tie origin. Except it's not it's one tie right. in the sense that this has been like, a, you know, an abomination between man and snake. This is, you know, one of the ancient races this is a naga spirit you know you, you would have had one tie worshipping these naga spirits um many many moons ago um now the snake does rise and stares directly into your eyes and as it moves its face is remarkably human like and its tongue flickers before it speaks I am Sasha the Bazaar. What do you seek in this ancient place? Speak truly, 
for I hear your heart. I'm here for the Queen. I heard there was a Queen. And I, the great Chris Tarvin, <laughs> wish to meet her in her presence. 